Welcome to Medically Speaking. My guest today is Dr. John Selleck, an infectious disease expert with Clyde Health at the University of Buffalo. Doc, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Mike. I want to talk to you a little bit about, you know, what's currently going on with COVID. There's been uh, some changes inside hospitals and healthcare facilities relative to masking. Um, there's been some discussion about transmission rates. So I figured we'd bring you on to talk a little bit about that stuff. So if you can, let's just talk about the cur- current COVID-19 picture. What's it look like in the community today versus three years ago? Yeah, Mike, as you know, we've uh, been through this repetitive uh, whiplash with uh, COVID where the cases are up, the cases are down, the cases are up, the cases are down. Uh, so we're currently in a down, uh, which is a good thing. And as you've seen in the in the lay press in the last few days, people are rhetorically asking the question, uh, is this the calm before the storm and are we going to have uh, a, another big rebound? I think the uh, important thing that we have, along with the number of cases being down, uh, is that the severity of the cases is also down. We are not seeing uh, the uh, the hospitals overwhelmed the way we did uh, the past couple years. So when you look at the metrics that we follow, the uh, community rate that or, or the uh, community level that CDC put together, uh, that's made up of the community transmission level and the effect of uh, the number of cases uh, on the healthcare system uh, uh, in the particular area. Uh, Right now in Western New York, we're in in pretty good shape. Our community transmission level is down uh, and our hospitals are actually, uh, you know, pretty well uh, compensated. We're not being uh, overwhelmed with a number of uh, cases. Doc, let me ask you, so when you say, um, you know, there still are people that are getting COVID, but you know, the severity isn't as great. So from an infectious disease perspective, um, do you guys chalk that up to having herd immunity? Uh, is that uh, people who have been vaccinated? Is it a combination of that? Is this the fact that this is our new normal and we're always going to have this in our lives? It's just the severity isn't as great. So people often ask me, why was this so bad in the beginning and it's gotten less bad? And I don't think there's one single answer. Uh, Certainly, you know, that first wave in in 2020 uh, with a lot of mortality uh, was because, uh, you know, we were dealing with an immunologically virgin population. Uh, You know, we had no no experience with this virus. Uh, So people were... uh, uh, being not only getting infected, but getting clinically uh, very uh, ill from this. Uh, there is some evidence that the earlier variants, that they were all more severe uh, than the the variants that are currently circulating. And it's always hard to figure out because, uh, you know, you've taken a lot of the susceptible people out of the population, either because they died or because they uh, recovered and developed immunity or they've been vaccinated. Uh, so it's hard to pin down and then you, you know, you brought up, uh, brought up the part about community immunity. You know, we always hate calling it herd immunity because there's been about six different ways that that's been used over a uh, hundred years uh, from when it first appeared. Uh, but the the level of, of background immunity uh, that we see in our population is is very important, either immunity from uh, being infected or immunity uh, from being vaccinated. And and you know. Compared to three years ago, uh, now we have very high portions of the uh, community, uh, of people in the community uh, who have some level of immunity, either because they were infected or because they got the vaccine and the boosters. So those are, everything is playing in the right direction is what it comes down to. Yeah, and we, you mentioned transmission rates before. Um, if you can't explain for those who may not be aware, what's the difference between a transmission rate and the infection rate? And in- is there an easy way to explain that for those watching? Yeah, the transmission rate is, um, you know, I, I guess in its most basic terms is uh, when you put a um, an infected person in a population of people who are susceptible to the infection, how many of them will uh, get infected? And that's obviously going to depend on the variant, uh, what the activities are, how close you are to other people, uh, uh, you know, how sick you are, uh, the status of your own immune system. Uh, so uh, that's transmission. Uh, we always want to look at what's the difference between getting infected. So if I transmit the infection to you and you don't get sick, 
you know, that's, um, you know, kind of a no harm, no foul uh, kind of uh, situation. But if you do get sick, uh, especially if you get sick enough to uh, make it to a hospital, uh, then, uh, you know, that's much more ominous. So we always try to, to separate out uh, the the transmission rate from the clinical infection rate, because obviously if I transmit it to you, you're getting infected, but you may or may not get clinically ill when you're infected. Got it. And then so transmission rates, that was kind of the way that from a public health perspective, um, it was tracked and communicated whether or not we'd have to wear masks, masks everywhere or masks only in healthcare facilities. So if you can, Talk a little bit about some of the masking changes in Erie and Niagara County and how transmission rates played into that. Yeah, one of the things that happened, uh, you know, you, you know, a lot of people would say to me, well, you know, I don't have to wear a mask when I when I go to the grocery store. Why do I have to wear a mask when I go to the hospital? So the the metrics that were used to decide that uh, community masking, uh, you know, has become uh, optional uh, really goes back to that. What's the transmission rate? and what's happening in the hospitals, uh, the hospitals being a proxy uh, for burden on the healthcare system. Uh, the uh, metric that we use for removing masks in the hospital is purely the community transmission rate, which uh, actually gets updated somewhat every day uh, by CDC, but uh, the major update uh, occurs on Thursday. So we had made a decision that uh, once we were less than the high rate of community transmission that we would lift the mask mandate for the hospitals. And that's what we did for the Erie County hospitals. It took Niagara County uh, a couple more weeks before uh, they got to that level. Now there are two important asterisks, or actually there's a couple important, uh, uh, several important asterisks, but uh, the two that are most important is, you know, things could change. Uh, you know, we've seen variants come and go. Uh, you know, it seems uh, to me, again, as a virologist, uh, you know, how much worse could uh, Omicron get? It is already extremely efficient in spreading from person to person. The thing that you always worry about, uh, you know, could there be uh, more mutations that would make it spread very easily, but also make it more severe? So if we were to see something like that, then then mask mandates uh, would come back. Uh, the other uh, important asterisk is anyone who feels uncomfortable, anyone who has a medical condition that makes them at higher risk uh, of uh, uh, getting COVID or getting severe COVID, you absolutely can wear a mask. This is not a mandate that says you can't wear a mask. It, it's just a, a change in rules that you don't have to wear a mask uh, if you don't want to. And I've, I've been, um, you know, pretty, uh, pretty upfront about that. And I want everyone to know that if you want to wear a mask, that's okay. Uh, you know, and, we, and we've seen that you've seen that in, you know, people walking in sure. the hallways or in the lobby or in meetings, some right. people still wear the mask because they feel they may, you know, be unsafe or they may have an issue that they they're protecting themselves. You know, there are many other parts of the world where they wear masks a lot, especially during flu season. And we've already started to have some very preliminary discussions about what will we do next fall and winter? Uh, you know, because COVID pretty much outcompeted all of our other respiratory viruses. When we were in the height of COVID, we saw almost no flu, almost no RSV. Many of the other viruses that not everybody knows the names of also went down very much. But now we're back in a situation where flu is circulating, RSV is circulating, uh, all of these other viruses are circulating. So if we start to see a lot of cases of a viral respiratory illness in the fall, you know, will we make a decision that in the best interest of our patients that that everyone should wear a mask? Uh, that's not yet determined. There, there still needs to be more discussion with that and and how that would, uh, you know, and how that would play out. So in saying all that, in a way to wrap up, what can, you know, what can the public do to protect themselves? Let's get back to the basics in terms of hygiene and stuff like that. What's your message for the public? You know, knowing that, um, you know, flu, RSV, COVID is something that we're always going to be dealing with. What's your message around basic hygiene and preventative care? Uh, you know, good respiratory hygiene. We, we've been actually working on this for many years, even before COVID. Uh, if you're sick, don't come to work. Uh, you know, it, it, it actually got its own uh, word 
presenteeism. So we talk about absenteeism in the workplace. There's presenteeism in the workplace that if you're really sick uh, with a GI illness or a respiratory illness, please don't come to work. Keep all of your vaccines up to date, especially with COVID. You see that there's been a, uh, you know, some changes uh, from the FDA uh, and the CDC recently, and I think we're going to uh, get into a situation where we're going to see that, you know, we got an annual flu shot, we got an annual COVID shot, and now with the announcement today that uh, the first of the adult RSV vaccines has been approved. Uh, I would not be, I have no inside knowledge, but I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, uh, some of the companies whose names have become uh, synonymous with COVID vaccine uh, coming out with a vaccine that is a flu vaccine, a COVID vaccine, and an RSV vaccine for adults. There are other groups of patients who may even want to get uh, uh, COVID vaccines more frequently, people with severe immunosuppression, severe uh, underlying disease. As far as the other things that you would do in real life, everyone has to make their, their own decision. I think, um, you know, anything that's extraordinarily indoors, uh, extraordinarily crowded indoors, if you can avoid those, that would be a good idea. Wear a mask if you have to. I mean, every one of my, my jackets, my golf bag, my car, there's, I have masks pretty much wherever I go. Uh, and if I see something that looks, uh, you know, kind of sketchy to me, I'm going to wear a mask. Uh, but again, I, I encourage people to not feel bad about wearing a mask if they feel that there's risk, uh, either risk because of the situation or risk because of their underlying medical problems. That's great, Doc. And great advice. Uh, again, another great update. Um, you have become the go-to subject medic expert for us on COVID-19. Uh, so we thank you for your time. Dr. John Selleck is an infectious disease expert with Clyde Health and University of Buffalo. Doc, thanks again for joining us today. Thanks again for having me, Mike. This is great to do these.